My name is Nathaniel Brown, and I play Oscar in Casper and Ice Bomb. So the main thing I wanted to ask you guys is, I understand that the performances were very free range. It wasn't quite improv, but well, you know what? Why don't you it was pretty close that? to improv. I mean, Gaspar wrote the script to sell the movie, you know, and then he chose us to sort of turn it into our own performances. Mm -hmm. At least for me, you know, it passed into it in way. Um, when we were shooting the film, a lot of the times, especially since the, the script was translated from the French. Um, so a lot of the words didn't really make any sense, and a lot of the sentences didn't really make any sense. So he was just like, you know, basically do it how you would do it as a human being. So I think it comes off hyper-realistic, like very, very real, which makes it sometimes uncomfortable to watch. But um, the dialogue was improvised a lot of the time on my part. Awesome. Well, so yeah. answer the question yourself? Um, well, definitely, um, a lot of it was improvised, um, but there was definitely, there was definitely a, um, you know, um, yeah, we had our walls to work with and the scene was this. You know, and uh, for me, you know, I was the only professional actress at the time. Nathan, it was his first film. And, uh, I was just a kid, you know, I had absolutely no I experience had no whatsoever. Experience, and neither did anybody else. And at times it was very frustrating for me working with a lot of them. Oh. <laughs> Not that I think I'm like this great actress. <laughs> But, Basically, what well, she's telling you is she's this great actress in this movie, and her no, performance is incredible. So no, no, she deserves what I'm all, saying right? is it was difficult working with people who were comfortable in front of the camera and being given nothing, and um, there was a lot of substitutions and tricks and pulling out of the stage. You know, but Nathan did an incredible job. I mean, his character, I don't think it even mattered, you know, whether it was that, but to me, the character was how did you <laughs> I mean, kind of, you know, it's just like, you know, there are actors for a reason. You know, and then every now and then you get lucky. Like, Cyril Roy is amazing. He's really, he's not an actor, and he's really creative, but he's really comfortable. So, tit or miss. What did your director, Gaspar, do to sort of, you know, obviously you, you had one professional actress and then the rest were, were amateurs, they didn't have technique, so what, what did he do to, to deal with that? Well, Some of the tricks that you just spoke of. I just, I asked him, I said, oh, about like the first week of film, I was like, you don't ever talk to me, why did you cast me? So I cast you, then I want you, and you're an actress, and you take care of the emotional part, and I'll take technical part. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, you know, Hitchcock was like that. It's not like uncommon and I have huge respect for that. He said, when I met you, you know, you're always an actress. He saw some short films I directed and he says, you direct yourself very well and you're good at trusting your gut. And he said, also, you cry more than any other person I know. And I need this girl to just cry for the entire yeah. film. And he said, okay, I get you now. And then we kind of got this, you know, vibe going between us that was really like, okay, I'll trust you, you know, you trust me, you know, and, um, but I was there moments I wanted to fucking strangle him because he cast me opposite like a girl that, you know, because remember Sakiko, like the, yeah, <laughs> she couldn't really, she couldn't deliver a Japanese performance. Yeah, that's so that was like her, her English. Playful the entire film. And, um, <laughs> I was like. But then, but then in the end, it's like that's what Gaspar chose all of us is because he wanted us to, you know, he, he was very specific in the mind scene like and, and who he chose and choosing paths and yeah, you know, choosing the these more, people like the Sakiko more and Sira. The, the more time I have away from the project, the less I'm at peace with. I mean, the more I'm at peace yeah. with it, because Same. I'm like, it's, it was incredibly because I'm like, I think that's art. Yeah. because I'm like, okay, well, yeah, yes, that's true, or in the end, you know, 
So what was it like for you? I, I, I'm not sure if I've read different things on this. Are, are you a filmmaker on your, in your real life? Like, are you um, in a I would like to be. Okay, so but it, you know, it's something like filmmaking to me is just, you, you have to have a collection of stories. I don't think right now I have enough stories to go on. I need to release myself in another way, so I think acting is the path that I've chosen for now, but obviously filming. The whole art of making a film, if it's writing, if it's directing, if it's acting, it's all exciting to me. So I'm just humbled to be involved in any way possible. Well, what was your experience like? You were I mean, literally well, Gaspar, the camera for a while. Yeah, Gaspar cast me because of the fact that I wanted to be a director. Right. Because he needed somebody who was techno technologically inclined and sort of saw things like a director saw them as well. Because I was... Did you operate yeah, the camera? Exactly. A few times, yeah, often. Um, because I, I guess it, I was technically operating the camera the entire film because I was Gaspar was bear-hugging me yeah. the whole movie. So I think that's why he chose me because directing is actually something I'd like to do. He wasn't vain. He didn't really care about being his face in the camera, unlike me, <laughs> because my big frustration was that I'm giving my all and my really emotional, and then the camera's fifty feet above my head. Not getting any closer. Yeah, and that really was frustrating to me. But when I hear the best compliment I had was, you know, the emotional resonance. Well, this, yeah, this was something that uh, I just spoke to Gaspar about, you know, the words melodrama and sentimentality. Do you think of, like, Douglas Sirk movies? Do you, because it's a new kind of montage, so with Hitchcock and with Sirk, there would be big close-ups in those moments. You know, in this movie, it's a different kind of montage, where the whole film's a montage, but right. there's no cuts. You have cuts, to be you know? very, very, incredible for both, for all of the actors trusting in Gaspar to mm -hmm. Know that he would do the right thing, and I think that's what was so frustrating when you're making the movies because you didn't really know what it was going to look like, and you're kind of wondering why you're giving these like incredible performances from Paz and without the camera. Without right. the camera, you're kind of like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what are we here for? What are we doing? Why are we wasting our time? Yeah. So I don't know. As as I said, as time passes, the more it comes into itself. Yeah. Well, not, not to contradict what you're saying, I, I'm only contradicting in a good way, actually, but you say that you have to trust Gaspar, but making it more theatrical like that, but not theatrical like cinematic, I mean theatrical like a theater, there are no cuts. He has to trust you, really. And him not cutting it was a, it means was like a playback and forth. No, I mean, seeing that's a back-to-play, which I really wanted to run in and see, it was a 20-minute um, but it was like theater, and it goes from me being fucked to me being beginning to fall off. I'm the only person I have in the world is gone. So we be breaking down. You know, that, that's theater. You know, without cuts. You know, so it really was only play. But at the same time, you know, it's not a play. Okay. Well, any closing remarks? I, I, I could do this all day, but... Uh. Closing remarks, <laughs> I, mean, I just hope it gets better over time. And I'm really excited to see the two-hour version of the short version. I'm excited to see the two-hour version. I'm just, I'm just fascinated that people are excited to see the movie. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just humbling. Yeah. I think, I think to me. Yeah. It's been sold out for weeks. So that, that's just kind of still blowing my mind. But. You know, I really feel like this is a film that's one of a kind. I, I only hope that I, you know, get across the emotion through it to very technically found. That was my wish and I attained it. And I'm very grateful to him and, um, you know, it was a bit traumatic. And I went to an ashram afterwards and I cried for 15 minutes. But I healed from it, you know, and so I'm not going to be like Maria Schneider and I'm not going to hate Bertolucci for the rest of my life. No, Gaspar Noe is, I have the utmost respect for him as a filmmaker, and I feel like he has the utmost respect for him as a producer. I feel like
healed from whatever and uh, now be objective. That's why I don't want to go back either. Okay, well let me... Well, I'm gratefully with asthma. <laughs>